This uh, talk is on error analysis when we do experiments in physics or in any science subject. Normally we use instruments and instruments have their own limitations and therefore you cannot make mathematically accurate measurements using those instruments. So, there are some uncertainties or errors in uh, taking the measurement. So, when we measure a length, say using a plastic scale, and the length comes out to be 6.7 centimeter. So, is it exactly 6.7 centimeter, not 1 micrometer less, one more, not 1 micrometer more? It's not that. It's not that because the plastic scale you have graduations at one millimeter interval. So if uh, it so happens uh, by chance that the ends of the line just coincide with some marking on that plastic scale so that you can uh, accurately say that the left ray is uh, at uh, say zero mark and the right is at uh, 6.7 mark, fine, that is 6.7 centimeters. Of course, there are errors, the thickness of the of the marking and all those things. But uh, if it is between, say, 6.7 and 6.8 centimeters, then you have uh, no way to accurately know where it is. 6.72 or 6.74 or 6.76. So, there is some uncertainty. Of course, you can make guesses. So... We say that okay, there is some uncertainty if it is between 6.7 and 6.8, some reading. Then, uh, to be on the safe side, we say that it is 6.75 plus minus 0 0.05 centimeter. So, that's a kind of uh, uncertainty or error we quote with that particular reading. Similarly, measurement of current from ammeter, many other things, uh, temperature from thermometer. So, you have graduations and that graduations limit the accuracy. Then you have uh, operators like uh, vernier calipers or uh, screw gaze where it is intentionally designed so that the errors are less, the uncertainty is less and uh, you have, but that also has a least count and uh, you have to be satisfied with that uncertainty which is there. Okay, so that is one. So at least count uh, typically gives you the idea that okay, your measurement or that particular reading is uh, has that that much of uncertainty. But but many times you can have measurements where the actual uncertainty is much smaller than the least count. <laughs> I give you the example. So suppose you are in a bus going from one city to other city and uh, your bus is standing in some city at some bus stand and you have milestones. Suppose every kilometer you have a milestone. So this makes some kind of a length measuring instrument with a least count of one kilometer. So, your bus is standing at some bus stand and you are in the bus and from the window you see that there is a milestone and it's reading something say 100 kilometers, 100 kilometers. Your bus starts and then next time it stops, the, again there is a milestone and uh, you can see from the window that the milestone is reading 140, 140 kilometers. Okay, so how much distance the bus has traveled from this bus stand to that bus stand? Now, 140 minus 100 and that is 40 kilometers. But what is the uncertainty? What is the error? What is that plus minus thing? The least count of this length measuring instrument is 1 kilometer. So, if I go by that uh, textbook description, it should be 40 plus minus 0 0.5 kilometers but do you think the uncertainty is plus minus 0 0.5 kilometers half kilometer this side and half kilometer that side certainly not 
when the initially the bus was standing at the starting station and uh, the milestone was just in front of your eyes the uncertainty could be hardly 2 3 meters the length of the bus and this and that and uh, slightly this side slightly that side if you are able to see the milestone from the window of the bus uh, the bus cannot be more than 2 uh, 3 meters this side that side that uh, milestone and same the story for the station where it stops so there also the uncertainty will be 2 3 meters so total uncertainty in that length 40 kilometers will be well within plus minus 5 meters perhaps <laughs> okay where as the least count is 1 kilometers so you have to apply your mind that's it you have to find how accurate your data is what is the uncertainty in that data that you have to estimate this is uncertainty so it is uncertain so don't go by the rules no rules will make it certain so that's one then uh, the other one is some kind of random errors and suppose uh, you are measuring time of 10 oscillations and then you will divide by 10 so how do you measure the time interval of those 10 oscillations you have to start the stopwatch when it is at one particular end and then you count 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 oscillations and when it reaches there after 10 oscillations you again press the stopwatch to stop it and then you see the time interval here the instrument is really accurate the mobile phones have stopwatch which we generally use and there you can measure up to 0.01 seconds so that the kind of uh, accuracy that instrument is giving but when the pendulum is at one extreme and you have to press your stopwatch right at that instant so there uh, you, you do have uncertainty pressing the stopwatch after seeing the pendulum at one end and then pressing the stopwatch at the same instant this is not always possible so there is some delay in the in pressing and, and same is the story when you you are stopping the stopwatch and therefore there are errors involved but this is not because of the instrument this is because of the of your doing and, and you don't have a really a great control on that it will be there with everyone it is there and typically that error is something like uh, 0.1 second or 0.2 seconds so whereas the least count is 0.01 second only so you have errors because of that and if you repeat it if you repeat this measurement several times say 10 times each time you will make a different amount of mistake in starting and stopping the stopwatch it's not always 0.2 seconds or, or not always 0.1 second sometimes it will be 0.05 second sometimes 0.07 seconds sometimes 0.12 seconds and so on so that is kind of random errors so how do we estimate that that estimation is done by so called statistical analysis repeat it in uh, if you have done it once you you never know how much uh, error you have done but if you do it 10 times or 20 times or 15 times yes then you will know that if uh, the values differ from each other this is because of some kind of random error which is getting introduced and then you must have studied uh, the how to take the mean and how to take the standard deviation right for to get the idea of the dispersion or how much different they are from each other on the average so to get that idea we use standard deviation where you first calculate the mean and then uh, for each value you see how much is the deviation from the mean and then you square them add them take a square root that is your standard deviation so typically that standard deviation gives you a fairly good idea that uh, this is the kind of random error which is getting introduced now if this random error is or statistical error is uh, much much larger than the least count error or the instrument design error then uh, you can ignore that so you have to apply your mind you have to apply your mind and get this uh, error estimates so this is about 
uncertainty in the values that you read from your instrument but ultimately these values are to be plugged into some mathematical expression to get uh, the value of some physical parameter that you are interested in so you have to do multiplication or division or taking square roots or things like that to get that final value so how much is the uncertainty in that final value of that parameter that you are interested in so that has to be learned and the rules are simple and i'll describe the rules for the basic uh, expressions addition subtraction multiplication and division and uh, if you have two quantities say x and y and you know the uncertainty in x you know the uncertainty in y suppose they are delta x and delta y so how much is the uncertainty in z equal to x plus y and the rule is quite simple in this case this uncertainty delta z is just delta x plus delta y you add the two uncertainties and you get the uncertainty in the sum of those two quantities and same is the rule for the difference of two quantities if uh, quantity is uh, z is equal to x minus y the uncertainty in z delta z is equal to delta x plus delta y remember and if you have a product z is equal to x into y then you have to do little more algebra you have to first calculate the fractional uncertainties in x and y and what is fractional uncertainty delta x by x is the fractional uncertainty in x and delta y by y is the fractional uncertainty in y so first calculate these and add them delta x by x plus delta y by y that gives you the fractional uncertainty in z that gives you delta z by z and you know the value of z and therefore you, you know the value of delta z so that is the uncertainty if uh, you are you have to multiply two quantities with their individual uncertainties and same is the rule for x divided by y so there also you have to calculate fractional uncertainty of x fractional uncertainty of y and add the two fractional uncertainties to get the fractional uncertainty of z equal to x divided by y so these are the basic ones there are others that uh, you will study if uh, that expression occurs that way.